Hi, my name is Julie Ann Link, and welcome to the Music Link. This week on the Let's Link project, I'd like to welcome Matthias Rotz. Thank you so much for being here, Matthias. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. For everyone watching, Matthias was my teacher about 10 years ago at the uh, Zürcher Hochschule der Kunst. And I'm so excited to be able to connect with Matthias again. So just to start out, could you share an overview of who you are and what you do as a professional musician? Okay, yeah. So for, for everybody who doesn't know me, yeah, my name is Matthias Rath. So I'm a bassoon player. Uh, for about, I don't know, almost 30 years now. <laughs> I started with 12 years to play the bassoon. I mean, before I was still, still uh, I was already involved in classical music. So I started playing piano when I was six years old. So this was kind of my yeah first passion. And then, um, yeah, I started playing bassoon at the age of 12. So right now, I yes, actually, yes, I'm looking back about 30 years of bassoon playing. And yeah, I'm the solo bassoon. I'm the principal bassoon in Tonal Orchestra Zurich. I'm teaching at the Zurich University. I, I have the chair of bassoon here. And yeah, I mean, and playing like all over the world, festivals, and I made a lot of recordings. And yeah, my passion is bassoon. Actually, my passion is more teaching right now. This is what makes me, what fills me, you know, what makes me yeah, fulfilled. Or, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, that's it, actually. <laughs> Matthias, could you share with us where you grew up? Um, I grew up in Germany, East Germany. So, um, was an was an interesting time because I was born like in East Germany, East Berlin. So the Eastern side, which was like the communism system. And yeah, during, uh, during my, my first 18 years, I, I experienced uh, the change, which was quite interesting because like in the Eastern system, we had like a lot of professional support for young classic musician and also for young uh, professional sports um, students who wanted to get like professional sportists. So for me, it was very interesting to, to yeah, experience all that. Different mentalities, like same country, but still different mentalities, different people, different ideologies. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up my, in my family. We, we are, I have two sisters and we were all involved in classical music. So my older uh, sister played the violin, my, um, I mean, the oldest. And uh, then my second sister, she played uh, cello. So we were all playing actually also chamber music at home. I mean, I started with piano. So first we played like um, a, a string trio. And yeah, then I moved on. I changed. I played, started playing bassoon. And actually that was from the beginning something I, I liked to do. It was, yeah, it was something it fits to me. It fit to me from the beginning somehow. Actually, I must say, I wanted to start with a trumpet or trombone because actually in my mind as a child, this was my favorite instrument. This was like, like a dream. Actually, I still have somehow. So I'm still very much, um, uh, um, how you say, I'm still very much res respecting my colleagues on the trumpet. I'm sometimes still jealous for the parts they, they can play. Um, yes, but finally, I'm very happy where I, where, I, um, where I ended the instruments because I, I feel it very, very much, yeah, yeah, part of me. I mean, it's a very natural instrument. It's very somehow easy to play. You can use like easy uh, pressure in your body. You can, you can use your hands very naturally. You don't have to arrange something something complicated to your body. So actually I'm very happy also with the voice of the bassoon, which is very similar to, to our voice. It's not too high, it's not too stressful, even when you practice the vibration you have everywhere. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, grateful for, for, the, for the destiny where it took me. 
with the instrument. <laughs> Matthias, could you share with us about the music programs in Germany and, and, and where you studied? Yeah, I studied actually in the, in the age of 12, around 12 years old. Um, what is what is like the, the the college like in other countries in, in germany it, it calls like the gymnasium right and this was a very special one i entered because it was a special college for music um, we have we not have quite similar systems now like in, in in germany now even in switzerland there are some systems which are like similar but not really because we were we, we were taught by um, we were taught by um, immediately from teachers from the university which is still very famous university in berlin germany the hans eisler music university and we were we were taught by these student uh, teachers and actually from the sixth class on we had uh, like i mean daily normal school but also like music history, music theory, everybody had to play piano, everybody. It doesn't matter which main instruments you, you were studying. And it was like a school full of musicians, which was fantastic because everybody had the same passion. There was no shame of nobody. I mean, there was of course better students and less good students, but everybody was actually following the same, the same idea. And this was something really great. So there was, as you would imagine, like studying music, the same thing just from the beginning in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the college. And this was something really fantastic, which, which helped me a lot from the beginning to be very focused. So it was just normal for us to like get up early, like practice an hour before school, then go to school to have all these subjects. And then after school immediately, if there was no lesson for piano or bass bassoon or something, it was just practice to the to the evening, right? Maybe doing like homeschool and the school homework and stuff like that. But it was like from the age of 12, 13, you can imagine was already very like straight going, being on track, right? And um, this is really fantastic. I think this is the best way to, to, to develop mm -hmm. early. Yeah. So there were no question about what I read, what am I doing later. It was just from the beginning. I mean, during my 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 study and during uh, getting older, of course, there sometimes there were some doubts. So some moments where you 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 have like you, you reflect and and uh, you you are not always like hundred percent sure what you do, right? Of course, but there were just few questions, and in general, it was just everything organized and yeah yeah and then after that i made my uh, abitur my exam and uh, like in the age of 18 19 and then i started to study in hanover the music uh, university for uh, university for music and theater in hanover and my teacher was uh, i mean my first big 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 teacher was um professor fritz finch in east germany he was like he was student from from professor fugmann who was also the teacher of Klaus Tunemann. And, and, and it was just like West Germany uh, was the, the main teacher was like Klaus Tunemann in East Germany. The main teacher was uh, Fritz Finch. And almost all the students from him were found a job in just in East Germany, like in Leipzig, in Dresden, in Berlin. I mean, there were so many fantastic orchestras. And this was my like my first idol, actually. He was he was my great like bassoon father, right? Who who influenced me from the beginning, 1919. So the most important years. Fantastic musician, fantastic father, supporting and and uh, yeah, just fantastic. And yeah, after that I I started, which was for my specific case just the perfect combination, because there was so much music of my first teacher, and then uh, um, and then came just this kind of to graduate to just a higher level of control right on the bassoon which which uh Dag Jensen could 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 teach me which was just everything i needed to bring it to the point right and to to understand what 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 am i doing and uh yeah this was basically my career i mean i was studying like uh, two years two years with Dag, and then 
because I was quite not, let's say, bored to study. But the problem was that I was so focused from the beginning and I was studying just I I, I, I I left the school and the six, seven hour school were just free time now. So I, I just uh, put practice in into that beside the practice I did before and after. So actually I was like practicing crazy two, three years was really addicted practice. And uh, I think this was necessary to get just really to, 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 to make the instrument part of my body. So I was, I was not looking right. I was not looking left a little bit different. What you see today, people, they want to celebrate people. They want to enjoy, they want to live. I did not do that. Actually. I just practiced from morning to evening. That's it. Even, even some gigs I was not doing because I was paid by my parents. I could avoid everything. So, so I was just practicing. And after like three years of excessive practice, you get bored in one moment, right? So you want to, you want to do something else. So I tried my first, um, <clears throat> my first audition in the Cologne, Cologne, Germany, in the opera, Cologne Gürzenich Orchestra, the first uh, principal bassoon. I, I just, I tried because the, 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 the co-principal just spoke to my teacher and my teacher just recommended me. So I, I, I went, I played and I got the position with 21, which was by surprise for sure, because I didn't expect to get it. It was even not necessary to get something. I was not like I have to, to play now in the orchestra, but it came in the right moment because then I was just busy by learning operas and yeah, acting in the orchestra and playing and immediately yeah, in Köln, put into being professional musician with, with um, uh, uh, how you say, uh, with um, responsibility, and quite a tough time for me, quite hard. Um, so I was like parallel studying and, and playing in the orchestra, and um, yeah, and after that, actually two years later, I. It was a period where there were just a few positions open. I just remember I was like 18 and I had so many friends also in Berlin because I'm from Berlin. So I had a lot of contact to Klaus Tunemann. He was kind of my second teacher because we had a good relationship. So he was so kind to invite me to his master classes, even sometimes private master classes he only gave to his students. So he was still, I mean, he was that time he was a bit jealous because he always told me that he wanted me to come to his class, but I was very happy with Doug. So there was no reason to go somewhere else, but he was such a great person and character that he still invited me and gave me his experience. Right. So, so I still, I'm still very, very, very happy to, to have this support from, from everywhere. Um, and yes, after that, actually, yeah, and, and I wanted to say, and in that period, there were not many positions free. So all these students from Klaus Tunemann, they just won everything. I would just remember the Radio Symphony Orchestra was gone and the DSO, the, the like German uh, Radio Symphony Orchestra in Berlin was gone. So many positions, just a few positions and Gürzenich was one of them. So I tried, I got it. And it is really very different to what situation we have right now. So many positions everywhere. It's just, just a gifted time for bassoon players right now. Um, even my students, I have like, I mean, every week there's an audition right now in Europe. It's unbelievable. It's so fantastic. I played in Cologne and after just a few weeks, maybe I realized this is not for me, the opera. I don't know. I just felt it because it was not my, the feeling of being on stage and being in the middle of, of the, 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 the focus of the audience. It was just something for me more necessary. So in the opera, I immediately felt that the next opportunity, I just want to go somewhere else. And actually after one year, there was this free position in Tonhalle Orchestra Zurich with David Zinman, which is still one of my favorite conductors. And, um, yeah, and I played for it. it. Was my second audition. Actually, I only did two auditions in my life, and I got it. And I, 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 I'm still so happy to be here. Zurich for me is a beautiful place. I'm so lucky to even be able to play in the same city and, and teach in the same city, which are not many people have this luxury in their lives, right? So, so I'm available for my students. I can, I can go always when they need. I can invite them to concerts. So for me, I somehow I'm so like you're. It's a blessing. It's um, yeah. 
Mm. Exactly. I'm so blessed. Actually, that's the word because I also see it in that way. Because if if the if the wish is not on your side for what you do, right? If there's not the right support, there are so many great players, and they might not find the position they would like, which many times is not their fault. It's just not in the plan, right? This is why sometimes it's, it's very dangerous to to put too much weight on your own doing right i made it i won it i practiced i'm better than the other. it's just something which not really works because we have so many examples which are different right so i think whatever we get we just have to yeah to realize that it's not just us doing it it's just happening and we have just to be yeah, grateful so i'm still here in zurich happy and yeah i mean this was like very fast my across my 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 how you say my professional career in between there were like a, a lot of like like workaholic like from 21 to let's say 33 or 32 there was no vacation there was just playing here playing there recording stuff to competitions i mean there were like i just skipped 15 years of being workaholic <laughs> <laughs> i i skipped that and actually i um I'm not anymore. Corona helped me to, how to say, outpace, to outpace being so excessive by just slowing down everything for like two years. And that's really also great. That's wonderful to hear, Matthias. Um, could you share about your teaching career and and more about your approach to teaching music? Yeah. Okay, my teaching career. Actually, it's quite it's quite quite easy, and it's it's not a big big long. It's not a long story. I I I was like very young when I I already were interested in in teaching, but but not like as a teacher, like to to teach people. It was more like with my colleagues when I was studying too. You know, I play for you, you play for me, and this was always I found very very helpful to to get this kind of view from outside when you want to help somebody. Like honestly, you have a very spe specific way to listen. And this is actually the main problem where many students, they don't improve as fast as they could because we have to bring these two kinds of listening outside and listening yourself to, we have to um, equalize these two, how you say, equilibrate these two things together. And so I was quite young. I was already interested in teaching. So um, after being a few years in Zurich, there were just a few positions free. I still remember my very first audition I made for a teaching position was in Hamburg, but I was really young. I mean, I was like 22 or something, just arrived in, 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 in Zurich and, and there was like a half teaching position free. So I, 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 I did it just to get also experience by knowing the situation you are put in when you have to apply, we have to present yourself as a teacher. Right. So I, I wanted to have some experience. I did this. I took a, I, I did Freiburg in Germany before Diego Chenna, when Diego Chenna got the position. And these were like my two general rehearsals to, to, to present myself. And then I knew already that, that the position uh, in, in Zurich was free. Um, and yeah, I mean, I played for it. I, I, I teach some students for it and it, it worked out. And this is actually where I started to, to teach at the age of 20, 25, I started. And yeah, and, 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 and then actually, I mean, everything else is just, I mean, teaching is at the end is, a, is, a, is an interesting, process you do yourself because when when you take it serious and when you really want to help your students you 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 have to you have to manage problems you you maybe never had yourself i mean i had myself many problems to 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 practice on 
and also serious problems because many think many people they always think that yeah yeah for you everything was easy and from the beginning you could do i mean of course i was like gifted by talent which also i not made which which also i did not make myself but still there were many 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 difficulties i also had to con had my confrontation with it i just always was somebody who never thought in the way of you you can't do it or you or you cannot over overcome the problem I, I for me always was was just a question about how uh, I mean to work on it how to find a solution find a solution and then I mean and then making steps forward and and then actually I, I just I mean I just built up my class in Zurich and and and, and I took people and 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 year by year I I I I, I, I learned more and and i was traveling a lot so i had made so many master classes everywhere i played everywhere i met interesting people i met interesting students i also was quite early to to be able to choose like really 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 good students um yeah and and this is actually where i am right now where yeah actually i must say i'm also but this is also something we have to be grateful for it because I have right now I have really like a lot of students who really find positions in like really starting their career to 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 be able to to yeah, just to live with that because it's a high risk to study music and and it 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 has to work right and yeah many many students many talented people few positions is not easy to take this responsibility like serious to 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 make it really happen to to make them find really um yeah ex how to say to have an existence with it mm, um, yeah a sustainable life and career exactly exactly mm -hmm. yeah i mean for me for me i i really see i'm always very interested in my student in my in my in, in the person who is like in front of me right because this is also actually what what makes a teaching so interesting because i i um this is a this is a um, how you say this is a maybe the secret of, of teaching to it, it's not just about teaching it's it, the first thing is that the students they need to feel that you are really interested in them not just interested in they are getting successful like interesting in really to see who is in front of you i mean who is that person how 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 they feel I remember a few lessons still we had, right? And you you asked me a few times, how do you know that about me? And I was just, I don't know, I just feel it that you are thinking this way or you have these like these uh, uh, questions or also these, um, how you say when these, um, I mean, everybody has different limitations, right? Somebody gets stress in a concert because of fear, somebody gets i mean there are so many reasons for everything and and it's it's important to be brave enough to even to make mistakes i mean because you have to make decisions and you have to say things in the lesson and sometimes you can even even destroy people by by saying something which is not uh, correct you know yeah yeah so it's a it's a it's a life experiment really but very interesting and luckily it, it it works quite 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 a lot in my case <laughs> mm -hmm. could you share about your chamber music career yeah i mean when when you have entered a good orchestra then i wouldn't call it chamber music career mm. i even would it call i even wouldn't call it like teaching career I mean, everybody is a teacher and everybody is a student. I mean, I am doing my seminars and my classes 
I'm still getting taught by so many people. If this is like the Wim Hof method, if this is a breathing, if this is like going to cold water, if this is meditation, if this is yoga, I mean, wherever you go, even if it's a fitness trainer. And I mean, we are all like students and teachers all our lives. I'm copying my teachers. I copied my parents. I'm still copying colleagues, which are inspiring me. Um, I mean, this is why, I mean, everybody has his teaching career somehow right and every musician has his chamber music career i'm 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 blessed because i have great colleagues and we do a lot of chamber music in the orchestra as well i make chamber music with my students with my with my friends i'm 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 happy to be able to be in also asked for for like ensembles i'm playing in my woodwind quintet which is a swiss five quintet i mean it's we actually also started playing it in the corona time um Whenever I, I can organize concerts, which I also do a lot, I can uh, I can I can I can I program my my own programs, and I just make sure that consistently I I, I increase my my repertoire. Um, I wouldn't call it so much like a chamber music career. I think it's just a part of being a musician in the orchestra because even orchestra sometimes is chamber music. I mean, many times it's chamber music. It depends in the music you play, and. Um, yeah that's that's basically that's basically it i mean i have my favorite constellation of course um and i think a big part of getting a good orchestra musician as a bassoonist of course is like making a lot of bassoon chamber music i did it a lot i was in the school i mentioned before in that school like in the age of maybe 16 or 15, we, we had a bassoon quartet. It's like the Quadriga Bassoon Ensemble, right? We recorded like one CD, but it's very old. We're not playing anymore together. Everybody's too busy. But we played it like for so many years, let's say from 14 to 19, like five years, like, and everybody in the same school. And, and there you have already the psychology of orchestra bassoon section right and this is why it's so important to 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 yeah to to have the, the ability to learn as soon as possible this kind of listening inside the bassoon section yeah because it's 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 basically the same like in the bassoon quartet and this was like maybe let's say a very important part when i was young where I could could smell like this kind of professional air quite quite early. Also, tough colleagues like all of them are really successful in top orchestras, and also quite challenging because everybody has had his personality. And I still remember we we shared also the position, so it was not fixed. Everybody played first or second or third, and then it was quite tough sometimes if you couldn't lead well or if they are like your entrance was not clean. It was like sometimes hard discussion. No, it's not clear. No, do it different. No, like that. I cannot, I cannot understand. And so there was like a very positive, in in a very like positive atmosphere was still challenging learning yeah this was this was quite nice so this was like something very important i i enjoyed a lot yeah but i think at the end of the day the combination of everything is what makes us even more musician because for me as an orchestra orchestra musician which is really in my case just like a small part but but very necessary part so i would I loved, I mean, I'm happy to be able to teach like full-time and play full-time orchestra. Not many people are allowed in other countries, but I think it's it's necessary to do both things. Um, the orchestra as a part, and then of course, like the teaching part, which is maybe for me the biggest part, the most important part. I, 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 I see the, the, the most important, um, yeah, I mean, passion and, also, let's say, like, important, how you say? Um, Foundation. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a way to really do something with value, you know, which, which has, because if you had, like, a nice relationship to students who could found even, like, being safe, safe to, to find confidence, and, and you could support them and then he could finally with this 
support he could like like ha have a professional life this is something which has like high value for me right as i was supported from so many good teachers and then i mean i mean i am i'm develop I, i mean I'm, i'm i'm searching for new music as now Danny schneider has composed like some more music we are we are going to record quite soon so i'm in contact with with composers we have like a like a new bassoon concerto now from ifrain osha we have like a new bassoon concerto from matthias muller there are so many like new, new stuff because of corona i couldn't play yet but now we are starting to play them and maybe record them so also everybody can listen to this kind of great music it's also an important part i like very much and of course playing like as a soloist on these festivals and doing my recitals, doing my challenge myself still to push myself a little bit. Of course, chamber music with colleagues, with friends. Of course, organizing the Muri masterclass where I'm like the chief for music, uh, I'm not the music director, but I'm the like responsible one for the bassoon judge and for the program of the competition, which is also very like another additional, um, how you say, part of being like this kind of, Um, musician i think at the end the mix of everything is what makes the music life uh, rich and um, yeah this is why it's it's hard to say hard to speak about like chamber music career right because somehow everything works together yeah Could you share about a memorable competition experience with us? Yeah, I mean, for me was competition for me was something natural from the beginning somehow. So we had um, we had this like Jugendmusiziert in Germany and already when I started playing piano, this was like once in a year there was a competition which had like three steps, like the, the region uh, part. And then if you, uh, if you are accepted to the, to the, um, yeah, to the second step and then whole Germany, this was like, from the beginning, I was used just to play competitions. And then with a the bassoon, if there was one year solo bassoon, then was one year chamber music, bassoon quartet. Then the next third year was maybe chamber music with something. There was always something. So this was all, always part of my, my um, daily daily work somehow um, which which helped me of course a lot also to to see the sense in the music because if you just practice alone and you don't see for what i mean you can play orchestra maybe but but also to you know have these goals and to understand okay you are on stage you can get used to that this was like very normal for me just to do it and also in my case with a healthy concurrence thinking so of course there was this kind of um how you say like um judgment of yeah you 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 made it very good this year and the next year you didn't uh, prepared enough and then there was not a big success because it's also very important to have no success also to understand to to handle frustration and then but to understand why maybe you had no success and to see the, the weaknesses and the, you know, this is very important from the beginning because there's never ending in, in, in your own, in your own development. I mean, this, it always goes just forward, sometimes slower, sometimes faster, but this is never like, now I'm finished. Now I'm, I'm like, it's, it's done. It's just, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to realize, but it's, it's, you are never finished. Yeah. Especially as a musician. And I mean, yeah, was part of my life. I mean, of course, myself, I always enjoyed also being in the, let's say, in the comparison of somebody. It, it for me always was like it motivated me. Not because I thought I want to be the best. This was not the case. It was just something interesting to see how far you can make it, how far you can go. I mean, I still remember in the school where I grew up in this kind of music school when I was young, our slogan also in the class of my teacher, the slogan was always enjoy. It was not like good luck. 
which I absolutely don't like to say good luck. I don't want to need luck on stage, right? Um, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, depending in luck, <laughs> it's, it's something, I mean, so, so our slogan was always enjoy it. This, this is from the beginning. And when you are young and you have something like that, this, this is like deep, deeply burned in the, in your mind. Right. So this supported me always somehow I could just switch, enjoy it. And I just always could come back to myself and to, to feel like, okay, I am here. I want to enjoy myself. This is part of being a musician. Enjoy what you are able to do. Enjoy what, what, what the talent you have. Enjoy the music you prepared. I mean, this was always there. So for me, it was quite easy. Even auditions for orchestras. Somehow, I could forget about the people mostly. And I could just be with me, you know. And then, of course, I mean, the first competition, I was 22. I played Prague competition. Um, I was absolutely no name. Nobody knew me. I mean, of course, maybe these people I studied with or like the class of Klaus Tunemann. Of course, you know, the people, ah, he's young, he's talented, but uh, not like today. So I was in Prague and I just prepared. I just played. And actually, I was surprised myself that I won. I would never, 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 ever expected something like that. I was not this type of person. I go somewhere and I know I win. This is something which actually holds people back. So I was totally surprised myself. It just happened. I was there. And um, I mean, this was the very, very first, maybe like, like really um, big success. I remember was my first Julie in the last round from, was not from memory in Prague. In, in, in Munich was from memory half a year later. Prague, not yet, but it was my absolutely first Julie I played um, uh, with the orchestra during the competition. Yeah, and I had a very and a very deep experience in that competition, which I also still remember where I played. It was it was here in the final where I played Julie V first and second only. And in the second movement, which is very emotional movement, of course, and, and I played it. I mean, I just played it as I could play it. I don't know actually how I played it, but. I still remember after after the, the final round, some bassoon student came to me from Asia, from Japan. And she came and she told me it was so beautish, beautiful that she had to cry. The first time in my life, I, I had this. And I was like, you know, like very young and I, I didn't have the, 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 the mentality yet to understand. But I still remember I found, wow, this is really deep. So you can touch so deeply people by just making music. And it's, it, yeah, it, it was like, it, somehow it opened my eyes. It, it, it woke me up somehow that what we do is something really important, right? Um, later, I, I, I was lucky to see this many times, especially in my orchestra and especially with like oratoriums, like uh, Johannes Passion, I remember Matthäus Passion. In my orchestra, we play it sometimes. And I, I was lucky to see it quite a lot of times in the audience in Tonhalle Hall in Zurich, that people were crying, listening the music. I mean, not just listening us, but, but listening the music in relation to the musicians, which are trying to be really honest, giving on stage, giving everything like, you know, and then to, to see how strong music can be, which still gives me the feeling when, when my life will end one day as a musician, I can say after this life, wherever it goes, I can make music. Because music is like the part from God. God made music, right? So this is something which has a deeper sense. I mean, even, even sometimes you can, you can recover from like sicknesses just with music. Same like you put children to the delphins sometimes to have this kind of, you know, because it opens up something. And, and it's, it's a bit sad to say that if you are like a financial man or if you're like a, a doctor or something, I mean, after this life, Wherever we go, we don't need this kind of uh, um, tools, you know. But as a musician, for me, it's something very beautiful to know. It might be not the bassoon anymore, 
maybe it's a different level, but still, wherever it goes, there will be music. Yeah. So this is maybe one of the like the the yeah my first like big competition and my first like really deep experience on stage by getting feedback from outside, right? Do you have any advice for coping with music performance anxiety? Yeah. I mean, this is like, um, it's always difficult to, to bring something so like so big and complicate to, to a final point. That's <laughs> true. Everybody's so different, but um, yeah, performance. I mean, the easiest way, I mean, maybe to give advice for people who are, who are a little bit in trouble to, to, to be on stage and to enjoy, this is what you mean, like who are, who are not able to enjoy like the moment of playing in front of people, right? I mean, the first advice I, I would give is to first to, to play something which, which, which makes you, which, which, I mean, like your favorite music, your favorite composer, the favorite like type of music, something which, which really makes, makes you enjoying where, where you can forget about the situation, because of course you have to play in front of people. But, but if you, if you are enjoying it so much, if, if the fun, if, if is in the, in the, in the front of, of your preparation, then might be the easiest way just to 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 let it happen and and to enjoy it what what we should never forget is that the playing on stage is is something like watching a movie right so you have to act and as honest you act as 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 better the audience will will believe you what you have to say so uh, this is like a paradoxon somehow. So if you enjoy, I enjoy. If you can feel it on stage, I can feel it in the audience. It's, it's quite simple. This is why good musicians usually are also good people. Like you have to be so, so good that you, you have no fear to just, you know, to open your heart and, and show your emotions, your world of, uh, inspiration and everything and as and if you think in in that way you realize is that that you are allowed to show yourself how you are actually because this is interesting for me i mean why i why do i enjoy meeting new people people not because they have to be like that or you know they don't have to be in a, in a specific way it's just interesting to see it how they are yeah so and in the music actually is the same thing somehow so as more you can understand that they just want to see me how i am and that's already interesting for them of course we have like so many like things you have to over uh, maintain somehow right i mean the technique and intonation and stuff yes this is something but this is not what i speak about on stage right um, many times we are limiting ourselves because we we are yeah we we are too much thinking about what do they think about me. This is like the biggest problem. So why why we are getting nervous because we are too much I I I, I too much um, how you say I it's it's like too important for me what what people think about me. I'm just. I'm, I'm taking care too much that they are thinking about me. I, I, I even want to control it because I want them to like it somehow. And this is usually the, the, the base of, of, of not being free on stage. But, but I mean, it helps to have just a great control on the instrument, of course, and to be like lead it in a very good way. But it's more like a, like a mental process. To, to sometimes I, I tell my students sometimes it's very necessary just to sit down without the instruments and and think about these questions what is music why I am doing music what what I want to uh, realize in the music 
um, um, why why this opinion of this man is so important for me does it has to be like that or not is it just an opinion why we put people so high i mean of course i also expect my my students to to that they really trust me so if i tell them do it this way do it that way this works better this works not better sometimes is 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 also discussion in the lesson because they have to trust me because maybe they feel in a different way right but this is also sometimes to yeah how 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 high i put people how i mean there are so many questions in the room we have to clear ourselves sometimes and and this makes you just having a more realistic perspective to 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 what yeah what happens on stage and this is very necessary that teacher also starts the process together with the students that you can you can understand more the truth behind yeah yeah this is maybe an advice for 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 yeah being more 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 safe on, on on stage i mean it will never happen that you feel always comfortable on stage still so many times i feel so uncomfortable on stage i mean this is not something which you also in in one moment you you found it and then you will have it for all your life uh, yeah but but then still to 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 be the leader in the moment of having the feeling, for example, being nervous on stage, still to try to keep the control at least a little bit, right? So sometimes it, it's enough in the moment of being nervous just to remember something like, why am I nervous? I, I don't want to be nervous. It sounds so ridiculous, right? But many times in the moment of being nervous, we are just we are just losing the control and and the nervous is leading everything so nervous makes nervous and nervous and then sometimes it's not possible just to have a clear think just in that moment just a little clear think and maybe everybody finds his own words or sentence or but um also this is maybe a lifetime process to at least find the level of mostly i can enjoy it yeah i don't know what to say it's something very specific because we are so different and you need different solutions for different players also yeah but for me always the main thing was i mean enjoy the music this is why mostly i enjoy playing on festivals now because i can choose my repertoire so I play music I like to play, and it's it's always changing. For example, this Schneider piece. This is just fun. I mean, we spent. This was not like people think. Oh, it's so amazing! It's so fantastic. Maybe you can you can make a link somewhere with this duo, because this is just really also increasing technique level so much, um, and it makes us like being relaxed players, swinging players, rhythmic players. This is very healthy to play this music. But this was also something, I mean, we practiced it for a while because if we start practicing something new and difficult, um, it needs time. So weeks, sure, two, three, four weeks, we met like, let's say two times a week just to, to work on that, very relaxed, yeah? And then we started to record and, um, yeah, what, what I wanted to say is that this, and then the time just goes like that. And you even didn't realize that uh, like it was risky, it was difficult, it was like, but all these ideas are not coming. You are on stage, you play what makes fun, you prepared it in a good way, you are in condition, and then somehow you forget about it. So play first what, what makes you relaxing somehow. Also very important for me. I hate to play music I don't like. I just can't do it somehow. When I was young, I did it sometimes for competitions. You have to do it. But right now, actually, I'm not doing anymore. I don't need it. If people ask me, can you come here? Can you play this crazy piece, like a new music and that, that, that. I see the music I like. Okay, I don't like, I don't do it. My lifetime is too, the value is too high of hours and hours and hours to force myself to do something I don't want to do. It's very hard. No, it's very, very, very difficult. This is why it's also necessary to really 
be, I mean, inert somehow. If you really love what you do, then you can spend hours and days with the instrument without feeling, um, right, without how to say, without to suffer, without to... Without working. <laughs> without working, exactly, exactly. Matthias, could you share with us a little bit about your reed making style and any techniques that come to mind? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, reeds, yeah, it's just such an important part of our final result that somehow there's no way to ignore it. Um, it's absolutely necessary to have like fantastic reads. Um, what I feel, what, um, what I feel, what, what I realized uh, um, during my, my career is that <laughs> or let's say in the, in the teaching, in my teaching experience, I realized that most of us are playing too heavy reeds because somehow we think that heavy makes a big sound. And wherever I give master classes, I let people try my reeds and mostly people are surprised they are so easy. Easy to play, easy to play loud, easy to play soft and, and just, just like sounding flexible the, the problem is that that whenever you use because i can't go too much in detail to how to make the reads right but in general if you use really light reads your your read will react very sensitive it will respond very direct and this is a moment actually and this is the only moment where you really start to think about air and air speed and the, the, the amount of air, and this is this has to be there to first make to to be to be able to learn how to use air in many different ways. Most of us playing to heavy reeds with a lot of resistance, because maybe loud is easier. But in the moment you have to first put efforts against resistance, you need a you need a spe specific amount of, of, of energy first. So first you have to push. And after this pushing, you, you cannot learn how to, how to have a very different um, and way to use air in many, many different ways, right? So this is just something I, I, I realized wherever I go, that is just everything is just too heavy and heavy makes also here forcing and then pushing and and everything gets just just so so tensed right and 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 the the, the variability of sound how to move the sound to 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 have different types of sound to have a, like a soft sound a round sound aggressive sound hard sound tight sound or like white sound what all, all these things you can just discover when you have like really light, easygoing reads. Yeah, this is maybe something just what comes to my mind when when I speak about reads. And um, yeah, and also when your read not automatically has the perfect round sound, I can push in. It's a bit resistance. It's a bit like closed, and it's it's dark and round, right? And, this sound you can never change in any direction. It's really just always like that. And this in the same moment will be bowing because it's it's not changing anymore. So if the read is like, let's not say like ugly or, or screaming or like tensed or, or bright. No, I don't speak about that. But if the read is a little bit on the neutral side, then you can also learn how to how to form your your, your read in a specific way to, to be even able to make it like bright and round and maybe even neutral, just a standard sound. These kind of things of being like in the middle with your read, like 
Don't be like, like this kind of sound. Don't be like too bright. Be somewhere neutral where you can do this and that by forming. Same for the dynamic, for the range of dynamic. Try when you just play standard in to be somewhere in the middle. So I, I need some efforts to get loud. I need some efforts to get soft, right? So this is maybe, maybe a, could be an advice to, to, to make the, the setup in the right way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, technique, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, separate these two things because for me, in my lessons, actually in my teaching, I do a lot of basic stuff. And, and to have lesson is not always the moment of inspiring the students just in the, you know, in the philosophic way, because somehow everybody has his own personality and is his own speaking. Of course, you speak a little bit about the uh, uh, about the the the, the music, um, the different uh, music uh, styles like Baroque and classic and romantic. And of course you explain like that. And then you speak a little bit about harmonies and you speak a little bit about like, like uh, feelings and sensation. And, but, but at the end of the day, this is also something very personal because I cannot teach you to like uh, cheesecake if you like chocolate cake. I mean, how can I teach you to taste like that if it's just my favorite taste? I mean, this is somehow the, 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 the technical freedom is the more important part because honestly if somebody has no music inside you cannot teach that if somebody is full of music uh, you cannot destroy it also it's not possible yeah but sometimes if somebody is full of music it not means he's a good musician because it's chaotic he doesn't know when to use what i mean even as a painter you cannot put all the colors together i mean you have to know what you do even if you are talented right so it's more about if you are a good musician automatically you are a good you have a good organization not just preparing reads in the right moment to have them ready in the right moment not just this or to go early to bed when you have important concert something like that no but also to organize the music i mean I am very gifted because if you talk about Carlo Colombo, about Stefano Canuti, about Klaus Tunemann, about Dag Jensen, about Sergio Azzolini, all of the great pillars. I mean, I, I have spent listening lessons from them. I know how they teach. I have tried all of these people. I have tried the reads from them because, I mean, we are friends. I, 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 I know these people, right? So I know the reads. I know how they teach. I know how they play. Very different, but... Uh, I mean, interesting, but they are all organized. Even if you don't think, they are all very organized. They know what they do in what moment. Of course, in the very last moment, you just speak, your body speak. I mean, for example, uh, staccato or something like that, it's part of the music. If you have a good staccato, you have a good staccato in the music. If you are able to play soft piano everywhere, I mean, it makes you just free. If you are free, you can just... You can, um, how you say, you can transform what is inside to outside, but you have, you need to be not limited. You need limitation. Uh, um, Resistance. Stops, stops this process, right? So this is maybe something, something I like to speak about. So in my mind is no separation between technique and music. I don't know when this started that people taught this and, and, and thought and so many uh, teachers still, ah, this is so much technique and now we have to speak about music. This is the same thing. It's not separated, right? So, so many good musicians, but no successful. It's, it's always a combination of everything, right? The, 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 the balance of everything. It's the same in life. I mean, there are so many smart people, so intelligent, but then you cannot talk to them because they're social, social wise, they are just incompetent, right? I mean, you need everything a little bit, the body intelligence, the emotion intelligence, the, the, the brain. I mean, there are so many things. And if there's this balance, it not works, right? So I would not separate them. In, in my opinion, it's really like, Almost everything is just like basic control. And, and, 
and then is and music will be there if if music is inside that's that's what what i do somehow and this is what makes i mean i have to say it because it's it's because my class is very successful like that but i don't see it as of course you inspire somehow but i don't have to give the music to somebody because anyway you, you somehow you can't teach this i mean right so so you have just to 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 realize the the to to just make to bring the weakness up to 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 have like control and stability everywhere and and then everything else comes 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 alone so this is somehow my advice to to technique so if you are if you have not enough good exercise to do at least one to two hours technique every day you made very slow progress yeah this is when we always think about like a professional football player right yes. i mean what, what what is he doing all day he's not playing football all day i mean if you if you look to a professional like a formula one driver yeah if you read these biographies of these people they are not just driving the car I mean, a professional football player has to do so many things which has nothing to do with football. I mean, like the, the strategy, the, the body exercise, the stretching, the, 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 the mobility. Ex I mean, there are so many things to do. And then, of course, they play a bit of football. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, this is, this is the same in, in our profession because we are also very high we have a very high profession high educated people in a very specific way right and and you have to look to everything and then at the end you put together and then yeah music comes out yeah. are there any skills that we learn in music that come to mind that apply to everyday life that you could share with us yeah but 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 actually it's it's i think it is a life a life school i mean there is a little problem that sometimes i mean some of us we are so much like practice practiced alone so many time in our when we were young that sometimes people say musicians are quite strange people you know <laughs> because i mean we have to spend so much time with ourselves and the instrument which sometimes make makes us difficult to to, to manage like the real life outside with people and to be like like just just normal yeah and and but but uh, but in the music actually yeah i mean you need you need everything you need the sensitivity sometimes you need also to be not too sensitive because being too sensitive in your orchestra also something very dangerous yeah you can interpret every movement of somebody like it's because of you as also i mean sometimes you need also to to be like to have the, the the distance to people you need to be organized of course you you need to be healthy you need to be strong you need to be i mean um it's it's something very very difficult which which challenge in many in many ways but um yeah I mean, as long you 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 try to um, to grow, um, as more you can, how to say, you have a nice method to to ha have your own therapy. I think somehow this is. I mean, this it's something fundamentally. It it has a deeper sense, which not many things on earth has actually if you think about the deeper sense of why we are here there are not much things not much but the most people they are just behind i mean um, just behind like being famous being rich being beautiful all these stupid gods we have in this world now right but um 
but if you go deeper, there's not much. But music is is one of them, actually. Yeah, maybe not every music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some really dis destructive music out there. But you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Is there any advice, Matthias, that you could share to musicians just starting out their music careers? I mean, let's let's go. Yeah. It's, it's difficult because it's so general, but um, it's not going to be fun always. Of hard work. Um, right now, this the society like to to enjoy things. I mean, the mentality we have right now is to everything has to be achieved easy, right? And if, if the, the game is not good anymore, I just change the game or I change the wife or I change everything just which is not good, you just change, right? This is a mentality you have more in these days than, than before. So it's, it's not going to be fun always. It's a lot of hard work. The fun of, of, of doing something is after a while to see it's getting better. This is a fun. It not means at the moment of resistance, if something is not getting better, that this is no fun. This is fun because if you see all these problems as a, as a challenge, as a chance to, 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 to learn, I mean, if there are no problems, we would be so frustrated. We, we, are, we are like getting de depressed for sure because to, to, to overcome problems, to, to, to grow, to, to learn of them. This actually is the, is the, is the spicy in, 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 the, in, in living, right? So many people, what I see, they have like, they have a lot of weak character right now. And you, you need a long breath to get a good musician. You need a long breath. You need a constant work. And you need a good combination between give confidence and time to to the process, but also have like a like a constant and 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 hard um, process in the in the practice, right? So so it's not fun as a relationship is not fun, as a marriage is not always fun. If has, having children is not always fun, but at the end of the day, you look bad, back, everybody says, the children was the best I made. The, the, the long marriage of 40, 50 years, this was the best what happened to me. Now I'm 41, I can say I'm so blessed because I had this career looking back it not means it's fun always right so just to to how to say to get these different different values in life which which yeah which is more for the long term somehow this is what i would give to somebody you need in general to to love what you do but in the in the same moment it, uh, it's not going to be easy, right? And Matthias, is there anyone that you would be interested to suggest to be interviewed next for this project? Ah. Yeah, that's a nice question. Let me think <laughs> about. Let me think about. Not him. There's so many interesting people out there. I mean, in my opinion. Maybe I'm still too young to get interviewed by you. What I, my, my, um, my projection was always to the older people, to the more experienced people. So I am so often like trying to get, get information from, from these really experienced people. Um, I, I was more try to I mean to 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 talk with these people like Milan Tukovic, like Valery Popov. I mean 
Of course, I mean, we are the, the, the young generation, we might be more open to give information and we might give even more information. And because we are, it's of course, it's a different mentality. But but I mean, I, I was I, I was always happy to stay in contact with people like, I mean, Stefano Canuti, he, he influenced me so much. Uh, the last time in the Gmure competition, I, I spoke to Valery Popov so much. He's such an inspiring person. He, he, he's so deep of, of music and art and he knows so much and I feel so small with him, I mean, in a good way, not in a negative way, right? I have these eyes like a, like a child to, to learn. I mean, Frank Muelli from the United States, for sure. It's such an interesting guy. Of course, Klaus Tunemann, Milan Tukovic. I mean, there are so many, like, this is was always for me. I, I, I mean, also my two older sisters. I mean, I, I got teach, I got they they teached me when I was young, even if they played the violin because they they are good musicians. So I, I was always my focus was more like up, like to hire uh, older people. And and still wherever I go, I want to learn. For me, it's less interesting to like give to somebody. I want to learn. So if I speak with people that have so great experience and I can like, like listen to all these stories, this, this makes me full of right, um, of, um, full of life. Yeah, being excited. Um, so, so I immediately would think about if, about people like that. I mean, especially Valerie Popov, he's old. He doesn't feel good. He has like healthy problems now. These people could be so, so, so interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe it could be also interesting to speak with. I mean, I'm a very good friend of Danny Schneider, for example. I mean, he also is such an interesting person, such an interesting life, especially this kind of combination. He's a fantastic jazz player. He plays all his music just on the sax, just like that. And, and he loves the bassoon. He loves the country bassoon. This would be also something could be quite, quite interesting, in my opinion. Wonderful, Matthias. Thank you so much for those recommendations. You're welcome. You're and thank welcome. you for this opportunity to interview you and just get a further glimpse into your life. It's wonderful to catch up with you again. Super. For everyone watching, check out Matthias's live hosting session coming up this Sunday, where he's sharing an open panel discussion. Find out more about Matthias and his work at matthiasstrotz.de. Please like, comment, and share any questions or feedback in the section below, and we'd be happy to incorporate these in the live discussion. Please subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell for notifications, which really helps keep the music link moving forward. The music link is a New Zealand-based resource for people around the world to share, learn, and connect through music. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.